Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm already part of the way through this project, so let me give you a little bit of a backstory. My wife and mom bought me this wonderful fan from Granger for Christmas this year. It's a, a Dayton fan. Um, works great, puts out a lot of air, no complaints, ball bearing motor. Problem is it's too darn loud. Let me give you a little demonstration of how loud it is on low. So I've got the front fan shroud taken off already. So this is not really a video that's intended to show you how to do this on this specific fan, but just kind of give you the overall process if you have a fan that is too loud and you want to quiet it down some. So again, this, this is going to be low. It's pretty loud. So I'm not going to pretend to be an electrical engineer here. I'm, I know enough to be dangerous, but... My understanding is that how the speed on this fan is controlled is with this capacitor here. So based upon my online research, this capacitor is, uh, is wired in series with the fan motor and the, the speed of the fan is proportional to the capacitance. The higher the capacitance is, uh, the higher the fan speed is. So what I've done is I've gone on our favorite website, Amazon. I bought a bunch of different capacitors to try instead of this one. So this is a 20 microfarad plus or minus 5% 250 volt AC. Now if you have a 240 volt motor, you need a significantly higher voltage rating. You'll probably need a 370 or a 440. Um, so these, these capacitors here are all rated for 120 volts, actually around 240 volts AC or maybe some a little bit higher than that. I don't remember off the top of my head. But what is going to affect the fan speed is the capacitance. So this is a 20, so I bought a bunch of different values lower than that. So this one is unlabeled. That one's still in the packaging. I guess I should unpack these before. So here, uh, these are, looks like 10 microfarads. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna clip off these leads to this capacitor. We're gonna put on some spade connector so we can easily try different fan speeds. Now, from what I understand, this is kind of a trial and error exercise. You, uh, there's probably some fancy math that we can do to find out what the minimum is, um, but we just have to be careful that whatever capacitor we use doesn't cause the fan to stall because that could cause the motor to overheat and thus potentially a fire if there's no thermal overload protection, or maybe even if there is. So we want to make sure the motor still turns and starts reliably, but we want to choose a smaller capacitor quiet it down. Oh, cool. This one already has spade connectors on there. All right. So let's get clipping. Uh, I'll unplug it and then we'll start putting some connectors on those, uh, those wires sticking out. Before I start clipping wires, I thought this might be a good opportunity to stick the tachometer on here to see how much of an effect we're having. I might have a sound meter too. I'm probably one built into my phone. So I've got one of these, uh, optical tachometers I've had in my toolbox for about a thousand years. You take a piece of reflective tape, you put it on the surface that you want to measure. I'm putting on the back of the fan blade, hopefully we can measure it through the grate. And then you just kind of stick it on there like that. And it shows you the RPM. So let's get a measurement of both the RPMs and the sound with the factory capacitor. Probably a bit of a glare, but on the phone here, with no, no ambient noise, just you know, white noise in the background. The fridge is about 20 decibels. Me talking, it's about you know 50, 60. Let's plug it in and see what it's like with the fan on. This is measured right at the fan. Okay, so that was about 70 decibels or so on low speed. Let's measure the RPMs now. I was having trouble getting a fan speed reading from the blade, probably just because I wasn't getting good focus on it. So I put the, some tape on the actual hub here. Let's try that. Carefuling. We're about 1200 RPM. Good reading. 
12.50. Being very careful not to get my, uh, my digits in the spinny bits there. All right, now it's time to cut wires. We're gonna have to pivot and change strategies a little bit. I thought I had crimp on connectors that were small enough, but they were only rated down to, I think, number 12 wire, and this is number 16. So quite a big difference there. So I'm gonna use these guys, which I already have in stock, just little wire nuts. So we started with a, a 20 microfarad capacitor, and that was about 1200 RPM, if I recall, 70 decibels. And we'll go from the 20, we'll go to, let's go to the 15 because this already has wires on the end that we can easily connect to these wire ends. You guys want to take any bets? What change we'll see, if any? I could be wrong about how this speed control works. I don't pretend to know everything. Now, you might say that I'm just being lazy. I could have undone these wire nuts here. Or those They look like crimp on ones. You're right, I could. But you're right, I am being lazy. Both approaches will work. And both are fine. Alright, moment of truth. Let's see if any smoke flies out. Zoom out. Seems a little bit quieter, could be my ears. Let's do an RPM test, then we'll do a sound test. Lost about 100 RPM, it's 11.30 now, it's about 12.50 before. Let's check the sound meter. We're between 65 and 70 decibels, so we lost a little bit of sound pressure too. All right, so that's a 15 microfarad. Let's go down a little bit more. There's our 10 microfarad. Sound-wise, we're in the low 60s. Just under 1,000 RPMs, 970 or so. I don't know, I kind of think this is manageable. This might, be, uh, this might be our capacitor. So it went from a 20 microfarad to a 10. Did a little more experimentation off camera. So, I believe in the last shot I had a 10 microfarad capacitor hooked up and I found that the 8 actually seems to work the best. So, with the 8 hooked up, we're spinning you know, roughly I think, close to 900 RPMs. That's not even close, it's saying 1100. Oh, there's no way, come on, this thing is, yeah. About 900 RPM, maybe a little less. And you can probably hear it's not quite that loud. Let me get the decibel meter. So I think we're gonna stick with the eight. That's kind of where I'm going with this statement. So we're in the low 60s right now. Actually mid 50s. 
I had some friends over before and we were able to carry on a conversation like this. So I think I'm gonna leave it like this. The motor starts reliably, so I think we're gonna stick with the eight. Let's put it back together. Finally got the fan back together. It was a bit of an ordeal. Plugged in, let's turn her on. That's much more palatable than it was. Again, much slower, but I don't need a lot of airflow in this garage. Anyway, it's a short little video. Hopefully this guy, this will help you guys uh, if you ever need to adjust the speed of a, of a fan. This is, like I said, this is a Granger fan. I'll leave a, a link to the fan in the description uh, with the model number and everything. It's a great garage fan, it's a ball bearing motor. But again, out of the box, it was just way too loud. And now it's much quieter. Anyway. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe. Stay safe and thanks for watching everybody. Take care. In the spirit of being thorough, I thought we should uh, take a look and see how hot the motor is getting and make sure that we're not, um, yeah, we're not gonna overheat the motor. The motor is thermally protected, which is good, but I think it's probably just a good idea to check motor temperatures. So I got the, uh, the FLIR thermal imaging cam here. I'm trying to find any hot spots. So the hottest I can see is about 130, 135 degrees or so Fahrenheit. Hopefully you guys can see that. And this motor, I looked it up online on Granger's website, has insulation rated Class B, which is a maximum of 130 degrees Celsius, which I think is 260 something Fahrenheit off the top of my head. So we're well within those limits. So that's low speed. I'm gonna crank it up to high and see if the temperature changes very much. Fan's been running on high speed for a few minutes now. Don't see any major changes. Still maxing out, maybe 135, 140. We should be safe here, guys.